So hello guys and welcome to this advanced series for Laravel 5.1. So during the last days I have been wondering how to start the series. I mean, we already know about crude operations and we already know about controllers and views and models and routing and a lot of other stuff from the previous uh, videos in the beginner series. So I was like, okay, so in this very first video in my advanced series, I will start with advanced routing. And in order to follow with this advanced series, first of all, you have to download the source code from the beginner series. If you didn't watch the beginner series, then you probably do not know about the source code that we already have. So what you can do is to go to www.codeexecutable.com, which is the website of the, of the e-learning platform. And from there, you can go to your courses and you can find Laravel 5.1 for beginners. And if you click there, you can see that there is a materials uh, link here. So if you click there uh, and you are logged in, you can get the source code and it will be right here. So anyway, this is just in order to follow up with the advanced series. So, as I said, we will start with advanced routing this time. However, we already have a couple of uh, routes from the previous videos. So if you go to HTTP and then routes, you can see that we have two types of routes. We have the named routes and we have the resource routing. So we will go again through these routes and we will explain each of them uh, later. So what I will do now is to start with the very basic routing. So if you go to Laravel 5.1 documentation and then you go to routing, you will come up with this page. So the first one is basic routing. So basic routing is the worst option that you can use in your uh, Laravel application. So you might use basic routing if you want to create something very fast because you do not have enough time, or you might use basic routing for an API, or I don't know, something else anyway. But because we are learning Laravel, I will also explain this basic routing. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, four examples for each HTTP verb request. So we have for get, we have for post, and we have for put and delete. So in this example, I will just use the get. So let me show you. Route get, we can give a URI for this, for example, basic routing, and then we need an action, which will be a function. So inside the function, I will return something. For example, return, this is basic routing. If I go and navigate to basic routing, we can see the result. So localhost 8000 basic routing. And as you can see, we get this is basic routing, uh, which is our return. However, most of the times you will not return uh, a string. So what you will return is a view. So let me try this. Return view, welcome. And 100% this will work. So if I reload, we return the Laravel 5 view. Now, can you find out why this basic routing is bad from what you can see right now? Well, it is pretty obvious, I think. Okay, so for the get request, we just have the return view. What about the post request? So let's say that we have, for example, route post. So how will this look like? Well, of course, we have a URI, for example, uh, some URI, whatever, and then we have a function. Now, the thing, the problem here is this. If I go to my controllers, and then I go to my product controller, and I take, uh, for example, uh, the post request for this function, you can see that our routes.php file will grow big very, very, very fast. So you should not have your logic inside your routes.php file. And this is why the basic routing is bad, because in this way, you have the logic here. So yeah, let me delete this, and let me go to the next routing. So the next routing is the match routing. So as I said, we have a couple of HTTP verbs, for example, get, post, uh, delete, put. So the route match matches a couple of HTTP verbs to a URI. So let me show you. 
if I say route match, I can give, of course, the methods that we want to use, for example, get, post, and probably delete. I will match all of them to my URI, which I will call uh, match routing, and the action will be function races return uh, match routing. So what does this mean? So if I go to my match routing URI, so let me try this, match routing, you will see that we will get the result match routing, and this is a get request. In case this was a post request, it would still work, and we would still get the same result. In case this was a delete request, again, it would still work, and we would still get the same result, which is match routing. So this is the purpose of this route match, to match the verbs, the HTTP verbs that we specify here to a URI, and it will always return the same result. Now, if we go to the documentation, we can see that the next route in the list is the any route. So the any route is very much similar to the match route, and I will explain why. So if you say route any, uh, it will ask for a URI, and the URI can be any route, for example, and we also need a function here, and we will return any route. Now, the any route, as I said, is similar to the match route because it again uh, responds to HTTP verbs, but in this case, it will respond to all of them, okay? So it doesn't matter if the uh, if the HTTP request is a GET, is or is a POST, or a DELETE, or a PUT, whatever, it will still work, and it will always return this result, which is any route. So let me try. So if I navigate to any route, we will get, first of all, we have an error, because semicolon or something, yeah. So semicolon there. Back to the browser. Reload. Okay, so as you can see, this is a GET request, and we get the result any route. If this was a POST request, it would still work, and we would still get the result any route. So for any request that we have here, it will always return this result. Now, the next one in the list is the URL helper. So the URL helper generates a URL. So if you go to your resources, and then to views, um, products, and index, you will see that we have the route helper here. So instead of the route now, I will use the URL. So let me try this. If I say URL, and then inside the single quotes, we need to specify the URI. So let me try one of these URIs. So I will try the basic, the basic routing URI. So here I will say basic routing. And the name of this will be basic routing. So let me save this and uh, try this out. So if we go to product, you will see in the end of this, we have basic routing. And if I click here, we should navigate to the basic routing. So what this URL helper does is to create a URL. So simply enough. Now, the next one in the list is the, is the route parameters. So the route parameters are, are one of my favorite. So we already have actually used this. Well, if you go to your product, for example, ID3, you can see that it will return a product with ID3. This ID corresponds to this item in the database. If I enter an ID that does not exist in the database, for example, 99, it will, you know, break with an error. So back to one of the working ones. So as you can see, it says product and then it accepts an ID and it uses this ID to find the item in the database, in the table. So how this works? Well, if we go, if we go to the routes.php file, you can see that we do not have uh, you know, a lot of information in this resource routing. So everything is implemented in just one line and we do not know what is behind that. So I will tell you what is behind that right now. So let me try this. I will say route get, and instead of product, because we already have this, I will say users. So let me do this. I will say user, and then we will accept an ID. So how can we do that? You just open curly braces. And inside here, you give the name of your parameter, for example, ID. 
And here in the axiom, in order to use that, we will need to specify the parameter, which is ID. And of course, we close that. And in the end, we will just return the ID. If I save this and I go to user slash ID3, you will see that it will return the number 3, which is our ID. If we say 55, it will return 55. If now we say something like uh, ID with letters, it will return ID. So whatever you type here, it will be returned. Now, what do you do with that? Well, you can use this ID, for example, ID6, in order to retrieve all the information for the user that corresponds to this ID. You could do, for example, something like this. Imagine that this is, um, this is a function inside a controller. So what you could do is this, user, user, and then find, and you could pass the ID and find the user with that ID and retrieve all the information for that user. However, in our case, because we just learned stuff, I will not do this, but you could very easily do this. And this is one of the purposes for the route parameters. So anyway, so let's imagine that we want something else. So I want to find the user with ID6, and then I want to find the album with ID1. So how can we do this? Because if I do this, you can see that we get an error. So in order to do that, we could have multiple parameters. So let me do this. Route, get. For the URI, we could say, for example, user, and then we will accept an ID, which is the ID of the user, and then slash album, and then the ID of the album. So album ID. Now, in the function, I will need uh, two parameters. However, let me try now without parameters. So if I do this without parameters and I try to return, for example, the ID, of course it will not work. So let me reload this. If I reload this, as you can see, it says undefined variable ID. So let me actually pass the ID. Will it work? I think it will work. So if I reload this, you can see that we now we return only the ID for the user, which is six. What about the album ID? So what if we want to return also the album ID? Well, if you want to do that, you have to specify another parameter and say album ID. And then we can add a space there. And then we could also print the album ID. So if I save this now and I try to reload, you can see that we have six and then the album ID, which is one. So very good. Now, what about the case that the user does not enter an ID. So what about the case that the user just says, you know, user? Of course, this does not exist in our routes, as you can see here. So what we can do in this case is to have optional parameters. So if we go to the documentation, you can see here in the end, below the route parameters, we have the optional parameters. And the optional parameters are very easy to use. So let me try one. So let me create an optional parameter, but not for the user. I will create a new one for the album. So let's say that the user uh, wants to find an album, okay? Now, in case the user does not enter the ID, then we want something else. So let me, let me do this. I will explain right now what I will do. So return ID. So as you can see, this is very similar to this one. The album is very similar to the user. Actually, it is, it is the exact same thing. So if I say album and then ID, for example, five, it will return to five. So as I said, I want when the user says just album to not get this error message. So how we can do that is to just say question mark. So after ID, you can, you can just say question mark. If you save this now, and you go back and you reload, there's a problem. You are still getting an error, and this time it's, it is about the closer. So what it means, it means that you're not passing an ID, but you're returning an ID. So the problem here is that this ID needs a value. So we could assign this actually to null. So let me try this. If I do not enter an ID, then pass the value null to the ID. 
So let me try this, reload, and as you can see now, we do not get any error. And if I say album with ID 6, we get 6. 99, nine, we get 99. Nine. If I say empty, we get nothing, because ID, as you can see, is null. Of course, you could assign another value for ID, which is a default value. So we can say 5. So in case I, we do not give an ID, then return by default the ID 5. And as you can see, we return 5 here. Okay, so this video is uh, at this moment very long, so I will stop now and uh, we will continue again with advanced routing in the next video.